best. Ninth. <laughs> Today is the ninth session of the Emotional Harmony Seminar. And we're going to discuss the subject of fear. Uh, the role which fear plays in our life. Uh, the cause of fear. Uh, and next week we'll be discussing some solutions for fear. I would say that fear is the one or the number one obstacle towards everything that we want to experience. It's the number one obstacle towards feeling peace, happiness, uh, unity, love. Uh, everything that we want to experience is obstructed by the emotion of fear. I also believe that fear is the underlying emotion behind all of the other negative emotions, even behind uh, depression or behind jealousy or anger or hate, that behind all of those negative feelings is fear, that we fear something. So there's, a, there's like an evolution of the emotion of fear. It starts out as insecurity, it becomes anxiety, it develops into fear, fear into panic, and then panic has two branches. One branch is withdrawal and internal paralysis in which the person becomes uh, depressed and closes into himself out of fear and has the the height of that would be autism in which there is no communication with the outside world and the other way of reacting to that fear is aggressivity aggressiveness and violence so we start with insecurity and if that is not worked on if we don't heal that sense of insecurity, it becomes anxiety, fear, panic, and then either suppression or depression or closing within or aggressiveness and violence. <clears throat> now, what are the uh, effects of fear on our lives? What are the results of fear on our lives? One result is that we seek to find security through external uh, events, persons, and objects. Because we do not feel inner security, we try to find persons and connect ourselves with those persons and be sure that they will always be with us, that they are committed to us, in order to feel secure, or money, or professional position, or social position. And so we seek to satisfy our own inner sense of insecurity by obtaining an external situation which makes us feel secure. This causes us to lose tremendous amounts of time, energy, money, thought, and talent, seeking out in vain something which we can never experience from without. Because anything that is outside of ourselves is subject to change and eventual disappearance. There is nothing outside of ourselves which is permanent. No relationship, no object, no position, no situation. We have a person today, we could not have him tomorrow. We have money today, we may not have it tomorrow. We have a job today, we may not have it tomorrow. So there is no real security when our sense of security depends on something outside of ourselves. And so many people lose a tremendous part of their lives, a tremendous amount of their lives, seeking this external form of security. And what we must understand is that there is little relationship between the external factors which may create the sense of security and whether one feels inner security. I have seen beggars on the street in India who have no place to sleep, who have no money, nothing except the clothing that they wear, 
And they, I, at least according to the expression on their face, are much more secure than other people who have a home and money and job and everything else. It is, it's not what you have which makes you secure. It's what you are. It's what you feel, what you believe within yourself. One person can feel secure with nothing because he has total faith in God and in the divine plan. Another person can be surrounded with material objects and persons and still feel insecure. So there's a big difference between being secure and feeling secure. The second uh, result of fear in our lives is that our lives tend to become habitual, stale, and boring. Why is that? A person who fears... Uh, prefers to remain within the known because what is most fearful to us the unknown and I've even seen situations in which people prefer the known unhappiness to the unknown happiness it's because they have known ha unhappiness for so many years or have known illness or have known rejection or have known a situation which is not pleasant for so many years, they prefer that known, unpleasant situation, that familiar, unpleasant situation, rather than an unfamiliar, pleasant situation. So the effect of fear is that it's like we have a number of walls around us, and, when, and that wall is that nothing new. And so we get into a rut, into a routine type of life in which we do not try out new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of living. We exist in a continual state of conflict between two basic needs, at least people who are on a spiritual path uh, find themselves in that conflict. Other people may not. And that is the need for growth and the need for security. The need for security causes us to prefer to remain with the old, with the status quo, and not to make any changes, and to not confront our habits or our desires or our way of living. The need to grow makes us want to grow out of certain tendencies, for certain ways of thinking, certain ways of living, which we realize now are causing our unhappiness. Or it could be a habit like smoking or drinking or eating too much or being over-dependent on certain persons. So we have this continual choice to choose that which means growth or to choose that which means security. All of us have fear and insecurity. It's just that some continually choose security and others choose growth. It doesn't mean that those who choose growth do not fear. They do. They have a sense of doubt in their minds when they go ahead to do something. But they don't let that stop them. 